You know, I'm used to bass players just kind of going. And then I see that video and it's like, you can do this on a bass? What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lone University. The very first reaction and analysis video I did on this channel was back in January, and it was featuring Mr. Billy Sheehan. Why? He's one of my favorite players of all time. And the universe has had a funny way of crossing our paths multiple times professionally over the years. I taught alongside him at the Warwick Base Camps and jammed with him a couple times, and then later was opening for him for Sons of Apollo when I was playing bass for Tony McAlpine. This was in early 2020. I'm such a big fan of the guy and just have so much respect, but I've never gotten into Mr. Big, believe it or not. I got to, into Billy with his solo work and all the other bands he's played since then, so you guys have requested Addicted to That Rush. This is from Mr. Big's debut album, Mr. Big, released in 1989, and to tie on one more quick story, that bass solo that's got millions and millions of views of him as a young player, I never knew that that was part of a live video for Addicted to That Rush. I just found that out looking this up. So I'm going to dissect everything and just appreciate Billy and talk about some of his techniques, his tone, and just other reasons that make him such a unique player. So let's get into it. Mr. Big, Billy Sheehan bass solo, and Addicted to That Rush live from 1992. Let's do it. The one and only Billy Sheehan! The one and only. Tons to talk about. This was one of the first videos of his I ever saw, 20 years ago on Google Video. <laughs> Never ceases to blow me away. Okay, real quick, when I first started playing bass, again, this was one of the first videos somebody showed me back on Google Video. I had no idea of the context. I just knew it was a guy named Billy Sheehan playing some of the craziest stuff I've ever seen. And knowing a bit more about bass and having gotten better and been doing it professionally since then, and it's been a long time since I've seen this video, it's still amazing how hard that is to pull off. But I got into the three-finger technique purely because of this guy. <laughs> always trying to get better, but the way he can just traverse the strings like that is amazing. And you'll watch his control. He really sticks over that pickup, which is something I also gleaned from his instructional videos. But what I've heard him say is that he always relies on one pattern of plucking, ring, middle, index. He's always going toward the thumb. And I watched him say on an interview segment that when you tap your when you tap your fingers on a table like you're impatient, it feels more natural to go that way than the other way. I've adopted more of a hybrid version of that where my fingers kind of go whatever direction my fretting hand is. So that's the great thing about being inspired by bass players. You can pluck little things that work for you, take the things that don't, and maybe find another player that does something that works for you, and then you develop your own style that way. But this is where it all started for me. And I want to talk about his tone because it's remained largely unchanged over the years. I want to get to that later, but let's keep this rolling. I'll try to dissect the best parts because it's all just magnificent. Somehow it's metallic, it's bright, but it's still got a warmth to it. See, look how he's staying over that pickup. Very focused there. Still has that breakup. It's great. Nobody has a tone like Billy's. Look, you can see it right there. He's right over that pickup. I've heard him talk about that a lot. It just it never gets old. Oh, that little lick there is a beast. Kind of, he's kind of raking down multiple strings with three fingers, so kind of. It's 
-hmm. something like that. That is hard to get. The control is really hard. And speaking on his tone, as far as the notes connecting like that, the way he has his drive, the saturation, a little bit of compression, it makes all those flurry of notes sound blended. Like it kind of makes them cohesive, but it also makes each one cut through. And touring with him and just watching his rig rundowns over the years, I know a bit about his usual signal path enough to know that he's using the compression and the drive in a very specific way to get those notes to pop. I don't know all the secrets of it, even being on side stage with him for six weeks or whatever we did. I guess it was more like three weeks back in January of 2020. I know he was running a Helix, but he had a lot of other stuff, heart key stuff. I've always just been fascinated with his the way his tone is dialed in. Let's keep going. Go. Oh, crazy stuff here. I've never gotten that kind of thing down. Having the right tone and effects helps, but he's basically fretting a note and kind of getting some tapped, I would call them artificial harmonics. You're gonna hear that overtone come in there. But when you add a little bit of drive, distortion, it can kind of bring those harmonics out. Uh, like, you know, saturation is just enriching the other harmonics that are there that you can't hear and sometimes effects and good things like that kind of help bring those things out. But it all sounds so homogenous. The sustain on that, listen to that. Great. That A power chord there. I stole that from Billy too, I do that a lot. Look at that. What a showman. He could still do all that stuff today. I've watched it. it so much respect. See where he takes it now. I think this is where that original video ended about right here. So I don't think I've kind of seen this part. Good to change it up in the middle of a solo. Change techniques, give it more of a chordal thing. That's super cool. It's like a mix of chords and percussion. For a minute, it sounded like he was going into... This kind of sound, and then to the B, the B, uh, the B major. Back to the minor one. But he's kind of adding this percussive thing in there, which is... And it's kind of choking it off. I'm not sure if his forearm is laying over that and causing that, but this part right here I found really interesting. I wonder if there's an effect there, a chorus. I love watching Billy. He is great about having the crowd just palm of his hand. Yeah. Haven't seen this part of this video. Looks like he's still using the three finger there, kind of doing more of a hybrid kind of, let's see, I guess he's actually kind of going the other way this time, index, middle, ring, but just to get that kind of, that uh, kind of grace note plucked chord thing here. Kind of just a pretty, kind of staying around E minor-ish. Just 
what a character. Back to that same raking thing. Three fingers up and down the strings. what he said there. Okay. Something got kicked on. It's got a lot more gain now. go on and on about the different techniques and stuff I, I mean that's cool right but we're at five minutes and he's just been ripping it at full bore this entire time that that wears you out i know he's taken a couple little breaks and stopped but the man's got endurance and chops like no other for this style the tapping the three finger just going and i believe he's really not plucking as hard as it as his tone might make it sound i've talked a lot about that on some iron maiden videos you know steve harris is known for having a really heavy hand but a lot of people have come and kind of corrected me and said, hey, his gain was just really high. He had compression. He had low action. He had flat wounds. He was actually plucking pretty light. And if that's true, that makes a lot of sense to me, not really knowing a ton about Steve Harris's signal chain bass stuff. I know of him as a player, but that might be the case here where you can actually play with a much lighter touch and go, get a lot more mileage out of your playing. But nonetheless, just pulling this whole bass solo showmanship thing off takes a lot of stamina, folks. And his tone, his playing, it's such a perfect match with Paul Gilbert. I don't know why I didn't get into this band earlier. Actually, I do know why. I have an idea why I didn't. There we go. Okay, here's the song. Paul Gilbert, same thing. I was reading Mr. Big disbanded in 2002. I started playing bass in 2003 or four, played a lot of Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd. And then I saw this Billy Sheehan video and I kind of was turned on to that. But those guys both went kind of solo around that time. I remember having a CD copy that a friend gave me of Paul Gilbert's, I think it was Get Out of My Yard, uh, whatever one he had the drill on. That's my first time having heard of Paul Gilbert. And then he had the instructional DVD with the, the pink background and the, the hat out of the, I'm sorry, the rabbit out of the hat. And then Billy was releasing solo records and doing a lot of clinician education stuff. That was just my first exposure to these guys. And they've all gone on to do really great things since then. And now Mr. Big has reunited, is doing a farewell tour. So like my whole chronology with these guys is kind of, I kind of found them in a weird era, kind of out of whack of where most people might have heard of them. But looking back now, this is great. Coming out in the 80s with this, this level of playing, they must have really put a stamp on the map. So let's get into it now, Addicted to That Rush, live. I know that energy from his solo is likely going to carry on and just go even crazier. Here we go. Young Paul, too. Yeah. These guys are two peas in a pod. Look at that. Nothing like a good shred battle. I can't, I can't, can't stop smiling. He's matching that little diddle on the ride symbol. Good band chemistry stuff. Just perfection. Oh, 
many harmonics. Billy's doing that thing a lot where he'll kind of mute down here with the plucking hand. He'll take it over here and mute it. Kind of acts like, you know, you've seen the guy slide a hair tie. That way when they're up here, they don't have the open strings ringing out. So in a pinch, you can just reach over here and kind of do that same stuff. Of course, with a lot more drive, it sounds a lot better, but just the interplay of that. And I want to say one thing about that bass solo we just watched. When I saw that as a... 14, 15 year old, somewhere in there, early high school. I think it, the way it hit me was probably the same way Van Halen records hit a lot of young guitar players back then. You heard these sounds coming from the instrument and you had no freaking idea how it was being produced. That's, that's just, I got the bug, I think, from that video early on. I was like, how can a, you know, I'm used to bass players just kind of going, And then I see that video and it's like, you can do this on a bass? He's such a pioneer for just this style of forward lead playing. And I know it's influenced a lot of you, but it has influenced me greatly. Let's let this roll. Yeah, down here in A. Such an 80s sound. Oh, that was cool little dynamic part there. They got real quiet. I heard those guitar parts kind of match and mirror the vocals. That was a really neat little touch. And then the drummer came in with this ripping just tasty fill. This is interesting. You know, I know enough about Mr. Big peripherally to kind of know they had that kind of 80s rock sound, but this is just catchy stuff. And what's interesting now is I'm hearing a lot of elements from that bass solo that he was pulling from this song, licks from this song, and just taking them in that earlier bass solo and just letting them blossom into this improvisation of crazy playing. Just what a great show. I'm sure these people there will never forget the fact that they were there. This is amazing. That's catchy. Little hot for teacher kind of vibe there. Yes, I know Billy played with David Lee Roth. I do. Look at that move there. He's he's still he's still doing the acrobatics in the song. Look at him over here. Right over here, Billy. Oh, next shot. He was over there doing some sort of, just always at it. Just love the guitar and vocal interplay, those little muted things he's doing. That's just kind of a cool dynamic touch. And then Billy's just hitting those hits with that big, boisterous tone. Oh, listen to that squeal he did there. Listen to this bass part. Right here. Did some kind of harmonic and just volume swelled it. Good stuff. Up to B.
Feliz. Love that little walk up E minor F G A. Really cool. Okay, good point to talk about his tone real quick. Even his even the stuff he's doing now at the winery dogs, all the way back till then, his tone has remained largely unchanged. It's almost like a singer's voice where no matter what project or band they're in, you can instantly recognize them because it's their voice. You don't find that a lot with bass players, maybe guitar players if it's like a Van Halen type, but you don't hear that a lot with bass players. There, there's a couple exceptions, but I think the greatest example of that is Billy. He has a voice on bass. It's, it's also the way he plays the really bombastic acrobatics, but it's the tone. He's got like a really neck pickup sort of, you know, not going to try to recreate it here on camera, but he's got that pickup push forward, really neck heavy sound. It gives it that really big bottom end. And I know in the later years, like I haven't really been paying attention if he's been doing it back then, but he splits the signal and kind of by amps it where you kind of drive the highs and you have the big lows to kind of fill it up. So you don't get that thin tone, but he's got that neck pickup quality to it. So the neck pickup is a big part of the sound and just the way he has the compression, the saturation, it has this really dynamic gradient of glassiness when he plays quiet. I guess what I'm saying is it's just a very dynamic tone and I've actually kind of gleaned that from him as well. This is kind of just my main working tone, the tone I use for most of these videos. If I play some chords with some dynamic in terms of not plucking too hard, there's no breakup. I have a little bit of clarity and glassiness to it. But if I want to dig in on this same tone, I have some breakups. So I've kind of constructed this tone in a way where if I dig in, I get a, I, I start touching that drive. I'll kind of have to look back and how I do this. I am going to release my tone soon, but that is something I kind of gleaned from him where you just have this one size fits all tone that can really work for a lot of different environments. Another thing Billy has inspired me with. So I just wanted to point that out. Let's see how we wrap this up. Those people are all old now. 1992? San Francisco, are you addicted to that rush? 31 years ago? Give me pain. What's up, the love it? Well, they have it, I Good audience in a play here. When I go without it, my body stops to end. Ooh, good call and answer stuff. I'm a sucker for it. Singer's got a great voice too. I don't know much about him. Yeah, back to that catchy look. Lick. They change the riff on the end. Kind of adding that little hammer on thing in there just gives it the kind of swagger. Just killer. Gonna be stuck in my head. Okay. Lord, 
What's he gonna do? I thought he was gonna stand it up and spin it around. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun, y'all. It was really great to travel back in time and see young Billy with just angst, spunk, piss, and vinegar ripping it. All those guys are. Again, I'm a fan of Paul Gilbert. I got into Racer X before Mr. Big. I've never been into Mr. Big. I need to go back and check out this album because, let's see, debut album. This is the lead single and the first track on the album. This is their first statement. Coming out of the gates with that back then i don't know if they hit it quite as big as some of the bands back then but it made a statement and i think it their reputation precedes them now with that kind of musicianship and everything both of those guys have done i don't know much about the singer or the drummer i guess they're back now doing the farewell tour which i gotta see if they're coming near me because this would be great to see even all these years later i know they rip it when i played with billy in 2020 i've said this story in some other videos I played 45 minutes, threw my neck out, ripped it. And you know, you always play a little harder on stage than you do in the practice room. I was tired. And then Billy got up there in his 60s and did it for two hours, full of energy. That was inspiring to me too. And I'm just so fortunate to have been able to have these experiences. I don't know if we'll ever be together again in these ways, but I'm so grateful that got to happen because I learned so much being there in person, watching him play. Um, Billy, you saw my last video. If you see this one, those are great times. And I hope you are safe out there on the road. And the last thing is his tone. I've talked about it earlier, of course, but it has remained largely unchanged. I think I want to believe there's been a time in Billy's life where he's gone into a band or a project or a session. They said, Hey, we need to change your tone. It's too much of what it is. And I would hope he would have said, no, that's my sound. That's like asking a singer to change their voice. And I don't see why it would be any different. Because nowadays, when I listen to anything with Billy on it, it's immediately recognizable. It's got warmth, it's got bottom end, but it's got that just big cutting through tone, and you can kind of hear the sizzle of him underneath those guitar riffs. And Billy's largely stuck to playing this kind of music, and the tone just works. I just have a soft spot for it. It's really cool to just look over the years and see what the guy's done. But I'll stop rambling. Thank you guys for requesting Addicted to That Rush. It was kind of serendipity for me to find that there was a video with that solo I saw so many years ago tacked in front of it. So this was a lot of fun. But I would love to check out some winery dogs maybe coming up. I have not really checked out the new record. That's on me. I've been busy. But I'd love to do more Billy Sheehan soon. Thank you guys for watching. Please like the video. Make sure you're subscribed. We will see you next time. Love you all and cheers.